Nick Khan is talking about some major changes happening to WWE, and guys, we're going to talk about it in today's video. I'm going to put the timestamps in the description down below. I want to address Seth Rollins really quick because there's been a lot of people commenting on my videos asking me about Seth Rollins and what is going on. I'm not sure where this rumor got started that Seth Rollins had walked out of the company, Seth Rollins is leaving the company, anything like that. And it is actually really shocking to me to see how many YouTube channels or Twitter accounts have continued to press this topic that Seth Rollins is leaving the company. Now, there is no confirmed evidence or reports that actually suggest Seth Rollins is walking out of the company. In fact, other sources have already come out and said it's the opposite. I know Ringside News even come out came out with something when they spoke to their WWE sources that Seth Rollins did not walk out of the company. I think a lot of people are talking about this because Seth Rollins wasn't on WWE Raw when there was the travel woes. Um, but guys, this is ridiculous stuff. The idea that Seth Rollins would be leaving the WWE, I mean, technically anything is possible. And, and thankfully, the wrestling industry is just super healthy at this point. But Seth Rollins leaving WWE would not make sense considering that him and Becky Lynch are on the road together. It makes more sense for him and his family to be on the road all under one company. Now, that doesn't mean people don't have frustrations with their job. I think every single individual out there would like to change something about their job. I don't know why we put pro wrestling on this pedestal. Um, but this whole rumor, this whole thing where people are talking about Seth Rollins leaving, that doesn't seem to be the case. And truth be told, as a fan of Seth Rollins and as a fan of pro wrestling, I just think Seth Rollins right now is doing a hell of a job with everything he's done in WWE. And, uh, you know, uh, when when you look at somebody could who could potentially take the belt away from, from Roman Reigns, you know, Seth Rollins is definitely on top of that list of, of where I would actually want to see that. So... For those who are getting worried about this, for those who are asking me to talk about Seth Rollins walking out and stuff like that, guys, there's not any sort of truth to that. Um, please, please, please understand that and, and share this video with someone else if, if it helps. Um, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about WWE. So really quick, Nick Khan confirmed a couple things, but more so we're going to kick things off with uh, Triple H. And so basically in a new interview, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Light Shet Live. Um, but basically, Nick Khan was talking, and more specifically, he talked about Triple H's role as head of creative. So everybody who's talking about Vince McMahon running the show and whatever it may be, that is actually not the case. Um, in fact, Tony Khan, Tony Khan, excuse me, Nick Khan had come out and said when this deal was officially announced, obviously in reference to Endeavor, he said Monday morning, Vince sent out a company-wide email to our thousand or so employees, including myself, and in the email, he laid out the structure of the new company, which certainly... Uh, we, you know, we've all read about and stuff. He says, in addition to Vince being the executive chairman, Ari Emanuel being the CEO, Mark Shapiro being the president, Dana White continuing as the president of UFC, and then obviously Nick Khan at WWE. Specifically, Vince articulated that Paul Levesque remains the sole chief creative officer. So he also goes on to say that Vince McMahon will continue to have input. So this is something that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, so he says, how does it work? Does that mean because I'm technically in charge of the business side of the business that I don't seek input from other people or I wouldn't seek input from Vince McMahon who created this entire empire? That would be a mistake on my behalf. Paul, Levesque, and Vince have a family relationship that goes back to the 90s. Paul's in charge of creative. If he wants input from Vince or Vince has ideas, then he and Paul are going to communicate. That's always going to be the case. We're lucky to have Vince. We're lucky to have Paul in control of creative. Now, let's make this very clear. Paul Levesque, Triple H, runs WWE Creative. As I've been saying for months and months and months, Vince McMahon will definitely have input. We've seen his input on television. But no, he is not 1,000% in charge of Creative. Now, I'm going to say this on my video because I just think this is so hilarious to me. Do I think it is silly that commentators can't say the word hospital, but they could say local medical facility? I do. I think it is so freaking silly. I'm not going to bullshit you guys. But what I'm not going to do is sit here and act like I hate the WWE just because they say local medical facility. And if I were to watch AEW and they say the word hospital, it doesn't make me think that they are a better product than WWE just because they say the word hospital, right? I look at booking and storylines and superstars who are being pushed and continuity. I look at so many different things. I just think wrestling fans always got to be miserable. So if WWE says the word local medical facility, good golly gosh, they're the worst company in the world. And if AEW has too much blood, good golly gosh, they're the worst company in the world. See, the thing is, guys, you got to watch what you enjoy. Let's actually focus on the things that matter. 
You know, me personally, I don't think blood really makes a difference, but I don't think that hurts the AEW product. I don't think, I don't think that's a big deal, but you got people trying to argue that it does. And I'm not going to sit here and say that it is a big deal. It's not my preference, but it's not, it's not something I would be like, oh, I'm never watching AEW again. Right. Same thing with the triple H Vince McMahon stuff. If you're saying local medical facility versus the word hospital. Yeah. Is it silly? Is it stupid? Yeah. Is it as is for me to sit there and, and rant about it on Twitter and YouTube? No, absolutely not. So again, you could see the Vince McMahon input on the show. And, and, and it's like, these are things to me that I just don't feel like are actually hurting the product. Um, we saw what happened with Monday after WrestleMania, and that was a whole different thing. But we're not talking about words being said on commentary. We're talking about booking. And this actually led me to talk to you guys about some more stuff that Nick Khan is talking about publicly. Um, and it was more specifically about the third hour of WWE Raw. So on that same interview, he says, look, we're specifically talking about the 10 to 11 hour time slots on Raw. And we're specifically talking to NBC Universal and ourselves about what we are doing moving forward. We ask, what do we do if we tweak this? That 10 to 11 hour. It is basic cable. It's not broadcast, as you know. We think that NBCU would be supportive, but we're not on a final conclusion on that. It's definitely a conversation point. By the way, Finn Balor, who took the ladder to the head at the moment, I was very close to ringside. And to see him take staples in the middle of the action and to jump up and take a cage like that, it's such a performance. Now, he is crediting Finn Balor, but all of this is in reference to WWE utilizing more blood and more uh, grunginess to the product, right? More gritty factors. And Nick Khan has actually been very vocal in the past with interviews. Like, you know, UFC does a really, really good job with sponsorships, and they got blood and violence all over their stuff, and that's like a legitimate combat sport. And I think for Nick Khan, his whole argument is WWE should be able to do it if it makes sense business-wise. Now, it makes sense for WWE to do it from 10 to 11 o'clock because at that point, you know, kids who are watching WWE, they, they should be going to bed for school, right? But in reality, here's the thing. Do I think it's going to change the product? No, I don't think so. I don't. Um, I don't think AEW or Impact Wrestling, which are both TV 14, I don't think, I don't think them being TV 14 versus PG would really, really make a difference. Um, but at the same time, too, for WWE to go a little bit more violent, for WWE to have a little bit more of that grittiness, a little bit more of that, you know, adult type of stuff. That's definitely not a complaint. But again, just for me personally, it doesn't really matter the company. I've never been one to really care about blood and wrestling. I don't think it really makes or breaks anything if it's done constantly. If you have it once in a while, sure. Um, but it's it's not something I'm against either. So look, WWE Raw is going to make some major changes. Obviously, as time goes by, we're going to see Nick Khan and WWE make some changes. But it looks like WWE has a really good television partner in NBC Universal, and I'm hoping that doesn't change when we move forward with new television rights. Let me know what you guys think of today's video, and I'll see you next time.